What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P. Today we have the comparison to rule all comparisons out there. I promised you guys this trio of a head to head with the Logitech PowerPlay versus the Corsair Dark Core and MM1000 Qi Charging Wireless Mouse Pad with the new Razer Hyperflux Mamba and the Firefly Hyperflux. And these three are pretty much the leaders from the top three like gaming companies out there, giving us a wireless mouse that is going to be charged exclusively from the mouse pad. So we're gonna be breaking it all down for you guys, covering all the bases, the pros and cons of each, comparing them to each other. So let you guys know, you know, which advantages they have over each other. And just in the end, to help you decide from a consumer standpoint, which is best for you and your needs. It's gonna be a long one to sit tight, but let's get into it. First up, let's talk size and overall build. For the majority of this video, we're gonna go in order of Logitech, Corsair, and then Razer, which is following in line with the release order. The PowerPlay mouse pad is 321 millimeters long by 344 millimeters wide, with the power base being on the top left. The Corsair MM1000 Qi mouse pad is 260 millimeters long and 350 millimeters wide, also with the power base being top left. And then the Razer Firefly Hyperflux. It's 355 millimeters by 282 millimeters, with the power base being directly in the middle of the top of the mouse pad. Now to note, the Corsair mouse pad is the only one here that has a USB pass-through embedded into it for plugging in things like a USB receiver or a flash drive or whatever. The other two do not have a USB pass-through. This also means that the cable for the Corsair mouse pad is gonna be much thicker, and you're gonna need to plug in two of the USB headers. In terms of thickness, Logitech is four millimeters thick, Corsair is five millimeters thick, and Razer is four millimeters thick as well. You're essentially not gonna notice a difference. It's on par with the usual mouse pad. But this is now gonna bring us directly into the mouse pad surface, which is where these all start to differ. The construction of all three is vastly different. For Logitech, you have essentially this piece of rubber once stripped down. It is flexible, but I wouldn't bend it because you might be you know, damaging the circuits inside. But they include inside the box two different mouse pad surfaces for you that you could swap out to your liking. One is a cloth mouse pad surface, and I personally always prefer cloth. And they also include a plastic hard glide texture but you can replace and remove these at your leisure. It's nice if you have that option. For Corsair, it's definitely the most rugged of the three. It is pretty stiff, and that's because there is no swappable texture here. We just have this hard texture surface. This is optimized for speed, like most hard texture mouse pads on the market right now are, and is also optimized for their dark core mouse. But again, this is the only option we have. And then Razer is also a semi-flexible material, but we have one mouse pad surface, but good news here, it is double-sided with again, a hard and a cloth texture for us to flip between. It fits within the grooves on the outside of the Firefly, so the texture doesn't slide around or get loose. And then there's this dotted pointillism texture that is ever so slightly grippy to also prevent the mouse pad from sliding off the Firefly. So Corsair is kind of left behind here, but only providing one hard texture surface. Razer gives you the best of both worlds on one reversible mouse pad, and Logitech has two separate ones inside the box. But Logitech also has a pretty big G logo on it for branding, which is kind of obnoxious. Not a big deal, but it's also not subtle either. Next up's pretty important. The mouse and the actual efficiency of charging as well as the battery. Logitech is designed so the entire time you're using a compatible PowerPlay mouse, it is being charged. The conductors are on the inside of the mouse pad itself, so the more you use the mouse, the more it charges, essentially creating a mouse that's never gonna die on you. However, if you do choose to use this without the mouse pad, it does have a max battery life of around 25 hours, and that's with no RGB lighting enabled. So you can still get some pretty good longevity out of this if you don't use it with the PowerPlay mouse pad. The G603 is the mouse that I have here, has a fantastic custom Pixar optical sensor inside with a DPI range of 200 to 12,000, and has a one millisecond response time over their 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection. The mouse is also ambidextrous because they also include some swappable side buttons that you can attach if you're lefty, or you can just use all four of the optional buttons and just assign those to be different macros or functions. It is a really great mouse. How is that different from the Corsair Dark Core and the MM1000 mouse pad? Well, almost entirely. See, Logitech uses an entire mouse pad surface area, while Corsair has one specific Qi charging circle in the top right. This is both good and bad, comparatively speaking. It's bad in the sense that it doesn't charge like Logitech does while you're using the mouse, but it opens up the door for other benefits. One, since this is a Qi charging pad, that means it's more universal to all Qi charging products. So you can place your phone here, your smartwatch, anything with Qi charging built in, and the mouse pad will charge it for you. That's pretty cool, right? Corsair also includes these adapters to turn any device you have that doesn't have wireless charging into a Qi compatible device. So if you have an older phone, you can now use the adapter and charge it while you're gaming. 
And then when you're done gaming or just not using the mouse in general, you place the mouse on the circle and it'll start charging for you. And that's just how this one really differs from Logitech. It only charges once it's in that circle. The mouse will pulse and the little LED on the top of the mouse pad will let you know that you are in fact charging. As for the Dark Core RGB mouse, I think it's nice and stylish with this unique bumpy texture. It also uses a custom Pixar optical gaming sensor with a 16,000 DPI and also has a one millisecond response time over the 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection. You can also choose to use both the Logitech and Corsair mouse over Bluetooth, but you're now going to be losing that one millisecond response time for gaming as a trade-off. On the dark core, you do also get some extra buttons and a DPI sniper button on the left side, which I always like, a swappable kind of side fin for your pinky, and more flair with integrated RGB, but more on that in the next segment. And then is the Razer Hyperflux, which is more similar to Logitech, but unique in its own way. So with their Hyperflux technology, the Mamba and the Firefly mousepad use conductive charging, essentially these special magnets that charge the mouse as it's in contact with the mousepad. But there's no actual battery in the Mamba mouse, so it's much lighter, which is a plus for some people, because the entire mouse itself is what is being charged. This means if you take your mouse off the Firefly, it'll die after about 20 seconds or so, because again, there is no actual battery inside and it cannot hold and sustain a charge. Is this a problem in gaming? No, not at all. If you're someone who frequently readjusts your hand or if you lift the mouse up while you're gaming, it's still gonna be connected just fine. But it will only be a problem if you leave this off the mouse pad for 20 seconds. It will then die on you because again, it cannot hold a charge. Now again, while this is cool in the sense that this also is never gonna run out of battery while you're gaming, emphasis on while you're gaming, you also can't use this wirelessly without this mouse pad. So if you bring this to a friend's house, you gotta lug the Firefly along with you. You can of course choose to use it wired if you want, but that kind of defeats the whole wireless selling point of these new mice. The Mamba Hyperflux uses a 5G optical sensor with 16,000 DPI. It is very ergonomic and has enhanced rubber side grips. You're probably used to it with previous Mamba mice. But again to note, this cannot be used over Bluetooth as an alternative like Logitech and Corsair can. Also, even though the method for charging is similar, you cannot charge the Mamba on the Logitech mousepad and vice versa. These are two strictly proprietary devices. Then moving on is software slash RGB. Logitech allows you to change your button functions and assign different you know, profiles and presets. You have those optional side buttons, like I said before, so you can select a new layout and go from there. You can adjust your DPI settings with five DPI presets for you. And we do have a dedicated battery tab that shows us how much juice is remaining with a power consumption reader even, which is fantastic. So you can really monitor the battery for your mouse. And then yes, RGB. Nothing crazy, just on the G on the mouse and on top of the mouse pad is all that's illuminated. You can change it to be a static color, breathe a color in and out, or go through that RGB color cycle. But comparatively, Logitech does give us the least amount of RGB customization here, but to me that's fine. For Corsair, yes, pretty much the same stuff with different profiles and assigning different functions as well as macros for certain buttons. You can adjust the four DPI presets in intervals of one DPI, which is cool for real precise customization. And as for a battery, we don't have a good indication here of the remaining battery life. Just a little icon in the settings that lets us, you know, know whether it's low, medium, or high, which is not really helpful. And again, for RGB, under their lighting effects tab, the Corsair logo, the scroll wheel, and some accents on the left side of the mouse are all addressable. With the RGB rainbow effect, you can have it shift colors, pulse colors in and out, or keep it one static color, but no RGB on the actual mouse pad. Then lastly for Razer, geez, props to you if you're still watching at this point, I know I'm exhausted. And then again, switch up all the buttons or enable their hyper shift mode, which is essentially remapping everything on this mouse to a different function. Think of this like your keyboard and the function key there. You can adjust the five preset DPI stages, but where this one you know, differs greatly is obviously Razer went all in with the chroma lighting. Not only does the mouse have RGB lights, but the entire Firefly mouse pad is its own light show on its own. The Firefly has a light strip around it, which has 12 individual lighting zones. So you can be real creative with creating your own lighting effects and then layers, or choose their presets of breathing, reactive lighting, spectrum cycling, a little fire effect, a starlight twinkling effect, rippling, wave, and static. And then again, you can layer these on top of each other to really go crazy with customizing the looks. So yeah, Razer definitely takes the cake here for RGB. And for all three they have, we can go in and calibrate the mouse to a specific mouse pad surface. You can adjust the, the polling rate, as well as the liftoff distance. That's all inside the software for you. Now to wrap this up, the price. Logitech comes in at $99 for the PowerPlay mouse pad, 
plus either an additional $99 for the G703 mouse or $150 for the G903 mouse, equating to either $200 or $250. The Corsair MM1000 is $80 and then an additional $90 for the Dark Core RGB SE mouse, so $170 total. And then the Razer Hyperflux bundle is just $250 flat, and that cannot be purchased separately. Now this is all MSRP right now. Amazon often has them on sale for like 10 or $20 off sometimes. Maybe if you wanna save some money, buy used. Just pointing that all out there, but I'll have I'll do my best to list them all down below. So from my standpoint as a consumer, Logitech was first to release this last summer and it kind of shook the market. Corsair was next in 2018, added their own unique spin on it, and then Razer now, who just put out their own take on its conductive charging method with no battery. So they're all different in their own way that adds certain pros and cons to each. And honestly, it's gonna cater to those who are already in their ecosystem. So at the same time, Corsair is the cheapest, while Logitech gives you the most options on your mouse, you can cater to your budget, and the Razer Hyperflux bundle is just 250. If this trend sticks, I assume all parties here are gonna release newer compatible mice that you can add to the market to give us more options, but right now only Logitech currently has more than one compatible mouse. Razer does have the edge in terms of RGB and customization. Corsair has the advantage in terms of you know, the universal Qi charging, as well as including those adapters so you can charge other devices you have, and they also have a USB pass-through. But Corsair only has that one included hard texture surface. Razer and Logitech both give you uh, both different surfaces. And that's definitely preferred. I know for me, I like cloth, so that's good. Then with Logitech, you can charge as you play. It all happens while it's on the surface. And Razer only charges with the conductive energy. So you cannot use this without the mouse pad unless you want to use this wired. But they're still all one millisecond in response time. So it's, you're getting these great gaming sensors and we no longer have to worry about lag when we're gaming with these wireless mice. But at the end of the day, you know, we still actually have a cable on the mouse pad. So we're not, you know, cutting the cable clutter on our desktop surface. Yes, we don't have to deal with the cable coming from our actual mouse itself, but the point is it is a big step forward in giving us reliable gaming mice. Each of the three here have their own advantages. They each have their own pros and cons over each other. Um, so it's really gonna come down to, I guess, which company you have more products of already. If you already have a Logitech mouse and keyboard, go with that. If you already have a, a Razer or a Corsair keyboard, go with that so you can keep these products in its same ecosystem. So that way when they release more compatible devices down the line, it'll all work together. I know a lot of people are questioning why Razer is keeping this you know, strictly in their ecosystem so you can't even use this without the mouse pad. But again, you're getting new benefits with it being very, very lightweight and the fact that you're, it's never ever gonna die on you as long as you're using this. So again, pros and cons for each. You have to weigh those and in the end, hopefully this video kind of helped you make a decision on which is gonna be the best for you. I know if you suck it out this time, uh, it's definitely been a long video. Trust me, I know I, I had to script all this and detail it and go over it all for you guys. But if you have any questions or if you just wanna you know, ask me something or if you guys wanna talk amongst yourselves, let me know in the comments section which you prefer. Also let me know which changes you'd like to see kind of made to these down the line to give us the best option possible. So guys, I hope you liked this trio comparison. If you did, give this video a giant thumbs up to show your support. Like I said, I'll try my best to have them all listed in the description down below for you guys so you can check them out. Feel free to hit me up and follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Well, I'm Random Frank P. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.